<laughs> uh, I'm so tired. Hello? Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How is everybody doing? Oh, excuse me. I am tired. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee Talk. I am so tired. Hello, Australia. Um, I'm about to get dressed and go to the airport because um, I'm going to fly um, home to see my babies today. Um, so yesterday I posted a video that I cracked up, cracked up about a little boy shooting himself in the balls and then they put the music on. Lord, when I tell you I cracked up y'all and what I noticed this morning was some of y'all were really in your feelings about that video. And I got to tell you something, I grew up in the 80s with a little show called America's Funniest Home Videos. That is my mentality. So let me just tell you now, if you grew up today or last year or in the 2000s or whatever, and you're real sensitive about that, that's on you. But we're the America's Funniest Home Videos era. And that shit was funny as all get out, okay? All I needed was the white dude who hosted the show to be like, now let's see what Timothy is going to do with this gun. Timothy, psh, boom, 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 boom. Y'all, I laughed so hard. I remember sitting around watching America's Funniest Home Videos as a family, and my whole family would have cracked up at that video so um you can you could be mad if you want to be put a cape on you could be super mad <gasps> that could be your halloween costume what are you i'm super mad because jamie posted an america's funniest home video on her facebook page and it got me in my feelings so i'm super mad for halloween i love it for you Oh, Tom Bergeron. Yes. Tom Bergeron and Bob Saget. Both of them. Um, anyway, enough about that. Uh, I'm going to show that to Max, though. Make sure he doesn't ever shoot himself into pee-pee. Um, so, anyway, I wanted to tell you something. So, this, um, this beautiful woman wrote me a message about she said Jamie I'm sorry y'all I just woke up I'm so sorry she said Jamie can you do a coffee talk about how you know that you need to get a divorce but you just can't do it and I said sure and then I realized, I mean, yes, I can. But really what it comes down to is fear. And a lot of times we believe that our fear uh, will protect us from having to be hurt. This is not to be confused with our intuition that kicks in when we are walking in an alley or get in an elevator with a strange man and something in our body says, this doesn't feel right. That's not what I'm talking about. If you ever get in an elevator with a strange guy and everything in your, your hair stands up on your arms and something in you says, this isn't right, get out. It's not right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about 
the fear that we cloak ourselves in that we believe will protect us from ever having to make bad, hard decisions, from ever getting hurt, from ever having to hurt other people. Fear won't protect you. It won't protect you. It will only hold you back from doing the inevitable. It will only hold you back for doing the inevitable. And the interesting thing about fear is it lies to us. We know this. We talk about it all the time. Fear is a liar. It provides false security. It tells you not to make a change, not to take a chance, not to try to better yourself because what lies on the other side of that is too scary for you. It's the unknown. We don't know what it'll be like as a divorcee. We don't know what will happen if we quit our job. We don't know what will happen if we shed this version of ourselves and try to be better. No, 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 too scary. Let's stay over here where it's safe. Fear's lying to you. It's bold face lying to you. And what I will tell you about someone who has been cloaked in fear before is we want to know. We want to know what's on the other side because we're human beings. And even though we have faith, we want something tangible and we can meet a million women who are divorced and we can see them better on the other side, but that's not enough for us. We want to know what will my life look like on the other side of this decision. And that doesn't exist. You can talk to a hundred women that have gotten divorced and each woman can tell you a different story. Each woman could tell you the same exact story. Still not a guarantee that that's how your story's gonna end. It just isn't. And people always want me to answer very specific questions about divorce. Y'all have to know something. I am not divorced. I have come very close to getting divorced but I am not divorced. So you have to remember when I speak on it, you know, I'm not speaking on it as somebody who, who has lived it. Um, I don't take conversations about divorce lightly. I, in fact, <laughs> I told y'all if Michael cheated on me, I wouldn't divorce him and y'all had a fucking shit attack. That, that, that for me would not be grounds for divorce. However, there are things that I would divorce Michael for that you may not divorce your man for. Um, but I say this to you to say, I know plenty of people who have been divorced. And I will say, do I know people who say, uh, Looking back, would I have put my kids through this? Probably not. Yeah, but not as many who say it was the best thing I ever did for myself. More people than not are very happy in the end that they went through and, and got a divorce. Listen, here's the truth about women, y'all. Women don't just willy-nilly give up. Women don't just willy-nilly say, this doesn't work anymore. I can't do this anymore. I'm at my breaking point. Do you know how many women stay years past the expiration date? Years. Most women stay years past the expiration date because, oh my God, we will run something into the ground. We feel so guilty. We don't want to let people down. We don't want to hurt our children. We don't want to look like we failed. We don't want to be the one that gave up. We don't want to be the one to carry the guilt. Oh God. Oof. So if a woman is getting divorced, y'all, you have to know, uh, you just have to know. She can't, she can't do it one more second. She literally just cannot do it one more second. 
But I am telling you that whatever it is, whatever change you want to make in your life, as scary as it is, the fear will not protect you. Fear is a liar. It is not your protector. And that is what we tell ourselves a lot of times. Like, ooh, if I stay in this scared place, I'll be safe. No, no. No. Um, and I just really want to check in with you guys. I just really wanted to, I can't see anything because I don't have my glasses. I see, it's so weird how bad my eyes have gotten. I see the comments. And if I focus really hard on one, I can read it. But I used to be able to just read them as they came. Not anymore, old lady. Um, I just really want to check in with you guys and see how you're doing and how you're feeling. Um, and to tell you that I love you and that I'm so glad you're here. Um, okay, see, now I can read this. Dawn says the fear is overwhelming. Oh, 100%. The fear is overwhelming. When I was at my breaking point with Michael and I was like, I can't, I can't do this one more second. And I was really, really, no, I'm not having marriage trouble, Katie. I'm good. Um, when I was like, I'm really, really like done. I can't do this for one more second. I started to become very afraid, believe it or not, of what would happen to Michael. What would happen to Michael if I wasn't there? What would happen to him if I wasn't there to care for him? Yes, he hurt me. Yes, he betrayed me. Yes, I was at the end of my rope with him. But I started to become very afraid for him. Would he ever let anyone love him again? Would he grow old alone? Would my children feel guilty? Would they feel like they needed to care for him? And it was a different kind of fear. It wasn't fear about me. It wasn't fear about explaining why we got divorced or what would happen to me. Yeah, I guess I was a little afraid of how my children would take it, but I was mostly afraid for him. And that's when I realized I still really loved him and blah, 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 blah. Um, can you trust him again? You know what? I had to just make the choice to trust him. I'm just going to be honest with you. If I would have like waited for like the trust to come back and like, you know, every day, like I don't trust him yet. Just waiting for it to come back. Girl, I don't, I'm not, I'm not wired like that. I probably never would have trusted him again. So I just had to make the decision uh, to just trust him. I just had to say, you know what? I'm going to wipe the slate clean and just trust you again. And if you, if you shit on me again, then I'm out. You know, because my mom, you know, Susan doesn't say a lot of things that I carry with me, but Susan did say to me one day, and I've said this to you before, and I met, and it stuck with me. She said, she said, um, you're, you can break him down. You can punish him for his sins. You can make him miserable and you can break him, but just know that you will end up with a broken man and you can't fix a broken man. So if you break him, just know that's what you get. And I just never wanted to break Michael. I wanted him to know how hurt I was and I wanted him to learn his lesson, but I didn't want to break him. By the way, do not feel like because I chose to trust, you know, trust my husband again, you have to trust yours. Uh, we might have very different situations. So, you know, that was just a choice I made. 
Um, okay, so um, we are going to work on releasing our fear today. We are going to work on remembering that fear is a liar and that it does not protect us from what's on the other side. And we are going to work on outlining the changes that we want to make in our life and saying, what role is fear playing? I want to do X. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Is fear stopping me from doing what I want to do or being who I want to be in my life? If the answer is yes, we got to start working that out. We got to, we got to start dealing with our fear because the fear is lying to us. It's not protecting us. It's not. I'm just telling you now. Um, uh, all right. I, I love you guys so much. I love you. And I, I'm going to fly today. I'm going home to see my babies. Can't wait to see my dog. I love you guys so, so, so much. Have a great, great day. Date night tonight. Maybe I'll get laid. <laughs> I love you. Have a great day.